Crop Talk on Market Journal is supported by Nebraska's soybean farmers and their checkoff. Finally today, this late in the season, crop diseases are still a concern for crop producers. This week, we invited UNL plant pathologist Dylan Mangel back into the studio to give us a rundown on what soybean producers should be keeping an eye on as we inch closer to the fall harvest. Just Dylan, great to have you back here on Market Journal. Thanks for having me. Well, a couple weeks uh, since your last appearance on Market yeah. Journal, more things happening out in those soybean fields that producers should be looking for. Sudden death syndrome. A lot of people are encouraged to scout for that this time of year. What's your advice on that front? Yeah, so I mean, we had early season stresses in these crops. The water came and then uh, the plants, uh, some have been infected by sudden death syndrome, especially in areas of, that have had a history of sudden death syndrome in those crops. But it's tricky. It's not just as simple as uh, going out there and saying, yep, this is sudden death yep. syndrome. Why is that? Yeah, so we get those bright foliar symptoms with sudden death, death syndrome. They show up. Uh, those upper leaves of the plant are going to develop chlorosis or yellowing between the veins. Uh, and if you've seen the symptom, you probably remember it. So those, that yellowing will dry down and then uh, turn necrotic and die on those leaves. So it's a very bright symptom, and you'll see it if it's out there. The problem is several diseases can cause similar symptoms. And really it's because that symptom is just associated with lack of water making it up to those leaves. So if you see those symptoms up there, don't just jump to the conclusion that it's sudden death syndrome. Uh, try and take the time and figure out what that is. And making that time investment is important because you're maybe going to use that information to make a monetary investment in your next season's crop. What are some of the ways to confirm that this is perhaps sudden death syndrome? So one of the biggest um, confusions is sudden death syndrome and brown stem rot and it's actually quite easy to tell them apart if you take and pull one of those plants and then split that stem open. The pith of a sudden death syndrome plant uh, or the center of that stem is going to be healthy. It's going to look relatively healthy. A uh, brown stem rot plant, on the other hand, is going to be completely rotted out inside of that stem. So if you just take a couple minutes to split them, it should be pretty clear what you're dealing with there. Uh, but if you're going to make a large investment in a seed treatment next time you rotate the soybean, uh, it might be worth getting uh, a lab to verify those results. Uh, so one of the labs that, that we use here, of course, is the UNL Plant and Pest Diagnostic Clinic. Um, it's, it's relatively easy to send samples into there and it's definitely affordable compared to the investment that you're going to make. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about brown stem rot and uh, some, of, some of the treatment options perhaps on that, on that uh, disease. Yeah, so when you're considering these, uh, there's definitely seed treatments available for, for many of these options. Um, really you want to consider that field history and what you've had in the past because we can't treat these in season. So you've yeah. got to think ahead about what you've dealt with. Uh, we put out publications, uh, Nebraska Extension does, there's also the Crop Protection Network that puts out treatment guides uh, that outline the effectiveness based on what data has shown for different crop or for different seed treatments. Um, so you can look on, on those websites and, and find some of those tools. You can also talk to your local advisors and see what they're recommending in your area for mm -hmm. these. Always a good resource there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about soybean cyst nematodes. That's uh, always uh, something popular. I'm sure you get a lot of questions this time yep. of year about it. Yeah, so soybean cyst nematode, it's one of those diseases that can steal a lot of yield without showing above ground symptoms, sometimes up to 30% yield loss with no noticeable above ground symptoms. So uh, while in most cases it's much less, it, it goes under the radar and we just don't notice it's there. And the reason it does that is because you can water your way through soybean cyst nematode damage. If you put enough water on it, you're just not going to see the symptoms and you're going to do all right. The problem this year is we lack that soil moisture. It's dry and uh, we're seeing this, the stunting associated with soybean cyst nematode show up early. So right now we're receiving a, a lot of samples into the lab um, for verification of soybean cyst nematode at a time of year where we normally wouldn't see that volume of samples come in. You kind of mentioned uh, it's abnormal to have that volume for this time of year. Mm -hmm. It's been a, a weird and wacky growing season, particularly for those of us in eastern Nebraska where we didn't see a lot of rain in the month, uh, months of May and June and then yep. you know, July. Everything kind of switched around. I guess uh, people might be seeing some various uh, different things pop up this year because of yep. that. Nebraska Extension is always a good resource, though, to get those questions answered. Absolutely. Yeah, with that additional moisture later in the season, starting on stressed plants, we really don't know what's going to show up. So definitely reach out to your... Uh, Nebraska Extension educators um, and, and use the resource that's available to you. Lots of field days as well. Coming up, we've got soybean management field days. We'll talk about that on an upcoming show. I'll give you the last word though this week. What else would you like to share with our viewers? Yeah, if you're considering treatments for next year, definitely 
focus on developing good field histories, taking those good notes this time of year. Uh, you can use resources at cropwatch.unl.edu or search the Crop Protection Network.